We normally start off the broadcast saying good evening, but tonight there doesn't seem to be much that is good about this evening. Because a few hours ago, the President of the United States revealed so clearly who and what he really is. Today, the President of the United States ripped open wounds that have barely begun healing in Charlottesville on a subject, race, that has tormented this country from the very beginning and nearly torn it apart more than once. He ripped open these wounds so he could show the world that he did not make a mistake on Saturday when he spoke words that were ill-considered, untrue, and insensitive. In the remarks he made today, the president revealed what he truly thinks about race in America. He revealed what he thinks about fundamental fairness, about a president's role in binding up the nation's wounds and appealing to the better angels of our nature, to quote another former president. He revealed about whether he can ever be a president for all people or just for white ones, a president for people of all beliefs or just the alt-right. Today, President Trump showed the world exactly how little he knows or cares about U.S. history. He showed the world how much a mother's loss matters to him when weighed against whether or not she praised him. He showed the world how far he'll go to avoid admitting he's ever made a mistake. So before we continue, we just want to be real tonight. This was a Unite the Right rally. It was a clear from the beginning exactly what kind of people would be attending. White nationalists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, members of the KKK. They showed up with clubs and shields and some with long rifles. Speakers were announced in advance. Yet on Saturday, the president merely said there was violence on both sides, on many sides. He returned to that discredited line today. Here's some of what he said just a few hours ago. Senator McCain yeah. said that the alt-right is behind these attacks, and he linked that same group to those who perpetrated the attack in Charlottesville. Well, so I, I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm sure Senator McCain must know what he's talking about. Uh, but when you say the alt-right, uh, define alt right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, as no, Senator, define it for me. Come on, let's go. Define Senator it for McCain me. defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt the left that came United charging at? Excuse me. What about the alt left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is Senator what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact that came charging that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any? problem? I think they do. Sorry, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I, I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Both sides had some bad apples, is what the president is saying. Both sides were violent. But today, the president seemed to go out of his way to whitewash the nature of what was, after all, an explicitly white power rally. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me, and you take a look at some of the groups and you see, and you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not, but many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So, now, he went on to claim that the people there to protest, particularly on Friday night, the day before the main rally, those people were simply protesting, as he just said, the taking down of a statue of Robert E. Lee. The president makes them sound like history buffs or preservationists, fine people just quietly protesting. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers. And you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You, got a, you, had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group, too. Unfairly, sir, I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly? No. I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look... They were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day it looked like they had some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. 
But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. So he's singling out Friday night, pointing to the groups that uh, were there protesting uh, the statue. I just want to show you a video from Friday night. And when you look at this video, and it's about a minute and a half, but we think it's worth you seeing the entire thing, ask yourself, do the people in this video who are chanting, Jews will not replace us, and chanting blood and soil, an old Nazi slogan, do they seem to be just quiet fans of the history of Robert E. Lee? Now, this video is from Vice Media. Protesting that the uh, Robert E. Lee uh, statue being taken down, or the idea of it being taken down, the people who President Trump said were just quietly there, just good people. When the president was asked by a reporter why he waited two days before calling out racists and Klansmen and neo-Nazis, specifically for their role in the violence in Charlottesville, including the killing of Heather Heyer by a person who used their car as a deadly weapon, this is what he said. I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct, not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement. But you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. And it's a very, very uh, important process to me. And it's a very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and just make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. President Donald Trump wanted to know the facts. Just let that sink in for a moment. President Trump says he wanted to know the facts. If there is anything we already know about this president is that he does not wait for facts to become clear before speaking. Has any president in modern history lied so frequently and so fast as this one? But even if the president was really waiting for the facts, in the case of the white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, the facts were plain before, during, and after the bloodshed. A fact the president had at his disposal Saturday while the president was willing, he says, waiting, he says, for all the facts. A fact he had Friday night when they marched. A fact he had weeks before when it became known who would be attending and speaking at the rally. A fact his daughter recognized Saturday when she reportedly urged him to call out these thugs by name. His Jewish daughter, who, by the way, we have not heard from for days, nor from his Jewish son-in-law. The president today, though, preferred to focus on the statues and displaying his grasp of American history. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. No, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So it's hard to know where to begin on that. Thomas Jefferson and George Washington were both slave owners. One wrote the country's founding document. The other led an army to establish it. Neither one did what Robert E. Lee did, which is take up arms against it. Yet they lived together on the same historical plane to this president. And if history doesn't matter, let's strike current events. The murder by vehicle of 32-year-old Heather Heyer. Today, the president neither mentioned her nor her mother, Susan Bro, by name. He did, however, mention that Ms. Bro had written words of praise about him. He thanked her twice, in fact, without ever mentioning her daughter's name. And when asked whether he will be speaking to her or visiting Charlottesville, he quickly segued to talking about the winery bearing his name. I own a house in Charlottesville. Will you go to... Does anyone know I own a house in Charlottesville? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, boy. It's going to be... It's in Charlottesville, you'll see. Is it near Where is the winery or something? It's a, it is the winery. I mean, I know a lot about Charlottesville. Charlottesville is a great place that's been very badly hurt over the last couple of days. But I, own, I own actually one of the largest wineries in the United States. It's in Charlottesville. He owns one of the largest wineries. As you might imagine, the president's words, just like his words on Saturday, are drawing fire, including from top Republicans, House Speaker Paul Ryan tweeting, We must be clear, white supremacy is repulsive. This bigotry is counter to all this country stands for. There can be no moral ambiguity. He's not alone. However, the president is drawing praise from at least one voice. Thank you, President Trump, for your honesty and courage to tell the truth about Charlottesville. That tweet is from white supremacist David Duke.